could we see a second Big Bang? In the beginning, and we really do mean the very beginning, probably, there was the Big Bang. But was it a one-time event, or could the universe be setting the stage for an encore? At the end of July, we'll be taking a look at the epochs of the universe and spending a fair amount of time dwelling on those first moments after the Big Bang. I tend to feel like they often get skipped over. We also have our Civilizations at the End of Time series that looks at all the ways life might try to persist in a dying universe, or escape, depending on the end time scenario, heat death, big rip, big crunch, conformal cyclic cosmology, and so on. Yet as fascinating as the end of everything is, it is only half the story. Every ending implies a beginning, and before we speculate about what might lie at the last tick of the cosmic clock, it's also worth asking how the clock got wound up in the first place, and whether it could be wound again. We haven't spent much time talking about theories of how the universe came to be, and there's a lot of them, enough that today we'll be sticking strictly to Big Bang scenarios and saving alternatives for another day. They are all four critical questions that always come up when discussing the Big Bang. First is why it happened, second, where it got its energy, space, and time from, third, what, if anything, existed before the Big Bang, or above it, and fourth, which we'll focus on today, could it happen again? Could the Universe experience a second Big Bang, and if so, what might provoke it, and would it mean the end of this Universe, the birth of another, or perhaps both? This episode is intended to be shorter than most of ours, but it's probably still a good idea to grab a drink and a snack, even a brief exploration of the origin of our immense and ancient Universe tends to be a big topic. Why did the Big Bang happen? The Big Bang is the ultimate origin story, but why it happened is still very much an open question. Over the years, several major theories have been proposed, each trying to explain how a Universe could explode into being for what seems like nothing. For today's purpose, we will skip the options that are specifically theological or have our Universe as a creation of ancient aliens or computer programmer, though add that by and large the theories we'll be covering have no more evidence supporting them than those options, and of course could also be just the method used by such an agency. We can't see any earlier into the Universe's past than what we call the surface of last scattering, which is when the cosmic microwave background radiation exists, and we try to logically plot backward from there off observed evidence and our knowledge of physics and cosmology, and thus we predict a Big Bang about 400,000 years before that. We invoke those same rules and try to figure out how it could have happened and why, and here are some of the better known ones. Number 1. Quantum Fluctuations, Edward Tryon, 1973. One of the earliest serious attempts to explain the Big Bang, without invoking divine intervention or mysterious initial conditions, comes from physicist Ed Tryon. He suggests the Universe might be a quantum fluctuation, that under the strange rules of quantum mechanics, tiny particles and fields are constantly appearing and vanishing from the vacuum. Perhaps, on a cosmic scale, the Universe itself is a vacuum fluctuation, a spontaneous blip of energy out of nothingness. Most fluctuations cancel out, but once in a great while, you get a Universe. This idea still gets referenced a lot in discussions about cosmic origins, and it has its merits, but it also faces a major problem. When we talk about quantum fluctuations coming from nothing, that's not quite accurate. Quantum fluctuations arise from the quantum vacuum, a sea of underlying fields and energies, not from true nothingness. Real nothingness would have no space, no time, no quantum fields, nothing at all. So pointing to vacuum fluctuations is a bit like noting that a business had many positive and negative cash flows, but ended the year with a net profit of zero, and then claiming the business never existed. There was still activity, just no net gain. Now it's perfectly reasonable to assume that something older or greater than our observable universe exists, in fact many of the theories we'll be exploring today do exactly that, pushing the problem back to a more fundamental reality. But that only shifts the burden of explanation one level higher. This is the classic problem philosophers have wrestled with since antiquity, the problem of the prime mover or uncaused cause as Aristotle called it. It is certainly attractive to suggest that the Universe emerged from a fluctuation in nothingness, or that time itself, and with it cause and effect, did not exist prior to the Big Bang. That may even be true, 
but often this idea is used to hand wave to avoid the deeper issue. Even if time did not exist before the Big Bang, something still fluctuated, so to speak. Tryon's theory is a good one, but like many good ideas, it can be abused to casually dismiss one of the oldest and deepest questions humanity has ever asked. Inflation and False Vacuum Decay, Alan Guth, 1980s Alan Guth introduced the idea of cosmic inflation, that the universe underwent a brief, exponential expansion in its earliest moments. We'll be dipping that deeper in the aforementioned episode on Epochs of the Universe, as I tend to feel folks leave it unnecessarily vague in discussion a lot, but these bonus episodes I'm doing entirely on camera right now as we transition to a new format are aiming for shorter gateway looks. Amusingly, that episode was written and recorded before this, making it a bit of a prequel sequel. I usually write 7 episodes a month and write them 3 or 4 months before they air, and record them and make their videos a couple months early too. Not this one, obviously, but I'm racing around tweaking those upcoming episodes since opinions seemed overwhelmingly in favor of this new on-camera format after our first experiment. All the remaining June videos were actually finished back in May, so I've been tweaking them to add in redone on-camera segments and trying to figure out the right lighting and lenses, uh, bear with me while we figure all that all out. Anyway, according to inflation theory, the Big Bang wasn't just a bang, it was an eruption from a high-energy, unstable state called a false vacuum. When this false vacuum decayed, it released a flood of energy, inflating a tiny bubble into an entire universe. Inflation helps explain the large-scale uniformity of the cosmos, but also hints that our universe might just be one bubble in a frothing foam of universes. This is one of our multiverse options too. Imagine the underlying reality as an infinite sea, where our bubbles, individual universes, occasionally pop into existence and expand at different rates. It's a handy analogy, but don't take it too literally. While it captures the idea of universes bumping into each other, the actual picture involves far stranger and more complex space-time topologies than anything found in an ordinary ocean. There are a lot of variations on this and some do allow another Big Bang to erupt inside this one, which also means it might be something we could trigger, and if you did, that could go many different ways. It might be a black hole singularity that just sat there, possibly as a gateway in, it might expand at light speed crashing into everything and in a ruinous doomsday of epic scale and without warning, or it might simply cause new matter to erupt in some spot, and that could be both a devastating weapon or a cool new way to create matter that will violently but manageably enter our own universe and which we could access. Lots of unknown unknowns here. 3. Cyclic Models and the Ekpyrotic Universe, Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok, 2002 Not everyone believes the Universe had a unique beginning, even within a Big Bang framework. Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok proposed the ekpyrotic model, drawing inspiration from ideas in string theory and M-theory. In this model, our Universe is a three-dimensional brain, floating in a higher dimensional space, sometimes called the bulk. Rather than being born from a singularity, the Big Bang was the result of a collision between our brain and another brain in the bulk. These collisions release enormous amounts of energy, effectively resetting the Universe. Importantly, this model is cyclic, after each collision, the Universe expands and evolves over trillions of years before eventually slowing down and preparing for the next collision. Unlike multiverse theories, the ekpyrotic model doesn't posit a landscape of endlessly branching Universes, instead it envisions a single, recurring cosmos, undergoing a grand cycle of birth, expansion, contraction, and rebirth. Time stretches infinitely into the past and future, with each Big Bang simply being the latest in an endless series of cosmic renewals. Crucially, the ekpyrotic model also rejects cosmic inflation, proposing the smoothing of the early universe comes from the nature of the brain collision itself. This concept also shares some similarities with an older idea, the Big Bounce. Early in the development of the Big Bang theory, before precise measurements of cosmic expansion, Many assume the Universe's expansion would eventually slow down under gravity's pull, leading to a reversal, a big crunch, and perhaps a subsequent rebound. 4. Big Bounce Cosmology, Martin Boyerwald, 2000s Another alternative comes from Loop Quantum Cosmology, spearheaded by physicist Martin Boyerwald. He proposed that the Big Bang wasn't the beginning 
but rather the rebound of a previous contracting universe, a big bounce. As the prior universe collapsed, quantum gravity effects prevented a singularity and instead caused a bounce, leading to the expansion we observe today. In this view, the Big Bang is just one heartbeat in an eternal cycle of contractions and expansions. The Big Bounce in this and older versions offers an alternative to the Big Crunch, where the Universe expands after the Big Bang and is slowed by the force of gravity until expansion halts and things fall into the crunch together. Bounce envisions the Universe that expands, slows, contracts, crunches down to an extremely dense state, and then bounces back into a new Big Bang. A cycle repeating endlessly, and again this is an idea that in basic form goes back quite a lot earlier, though often in science fiction like the classic novel Tau Zero, where loop quantum cosmology offers us an actual mechanism that might permit it. However, when astronomers discover the Universe's expansion is actually accelerating, the traditional Big Crunch and Big Bounce models lost favor. They also faced a deeper theoretical problem. They generally assume the Universe is finite in size, but we don't actually know if the Universe is finite, we only know that the observable Universe, the portion of the cosmos whose light has had time to reach us since the Big Bang, from places constantly and ever more quickly racing away from us, is finite. It may just be a tiny patch of a much larger or even infinite cosmos. Even if not infinite, gravity itself only moves the speed of light, so a larger but finite Universe spread beyond the cosmological event horizon, place moving away from us faster than light, have some issues pulling back together too. But in an infinite universe, global contraction cannot happen, gravity doesn't pull everything toward a center as there's infinite mass and energy in every direction, and more or less uniformly spread. Indeed in any sort of infinite universe or multiverse, at a large enough scale, everything has to be uniformly spread, and infinity definitely has large enough scales. This is one of the challenges that the old steady-state model tried to address, a model proposed before the Big Bang Theory rose to dominance, which pictured an eternal, infinite universe that avoids collapse by continuously creating new matter to maintain a constant density. Of course, not all models try to explain the Big Bang through cycles or collisions, some suggest the universe did not emerge from a prior state at all, but rather tunneled spontaneously into existence, without any before to speak of. 5. Tunneling from Nothing, Alexander Vilenkin, 1982 If quantum mechanics allows particles to tunnel through barriers, could an entire universe tunnel into existence? In 1982, physicist Alexander Vilenkin proposed exactly that. He suggested the universe could have quantum tunneled into existence from literally nothing, no space, no time, no energy, no matter, just a sudden, spontaneous emergence. This idea builds on the strange properties of quantum physics, where particles can probabilistically borrow energy from the vacuum and exist for brief moments. If that's possible for particles, Lincoln argued, why not for the entire Universe? In this model the Universe doesn't have a cause in the traditional sense because cause and effect require time, and time itself begins with the Universe. Lincoln's model aligns with the no-boundary proposal put forward around the same time by James Hartle and Stephen Hawking. In the no-boundary view, the Universe is finite but has no boundary in time, much like how the surface of a sphere has no edge. In this view, asking what happened before the Big Bang is as meaningless as asking what's north of the North Pole. This idea of tunneling from nothing does not avoid all philosophical problems, it still raises questions about why the laws of quantum mechanics themselves exist, but it's one of the more elegant attempts to explain how something can emerge from true nothingness without needing a prior cause. Beginnings, Endings, and Echoes As we've seen today, the question of why the Big Bang happened does not have a single answer, and maybe it never will. From quantum fluctuations to brain collisions, from eternal cycles to spontaneous tunneling, the possibilities are as vast as the Universe itself. Some of these ideas suggest the Big Bang was a one-time event, the birth of everything we know. Others hint that it was just one note in an infinite symphony of creation and destruction. But even if we settle on why it happened, deeper questions remain. Where did the energy, the space, and even the time itself come from? Did anything exist before the Big Bang? Is our Universe one of many or part of an eternal cycle? And if so, could we someday see a second Big Bang, not just in theory but in reality? 
those are questions we'll save for another time. For now, we can only marvel that we live in a universe where such questions can even be asked, and perhaps, someday, answered. And speaking of changes, as we mentioned, you might have noticed we're trying out a new on-camera format for these bonus episodes, it would take a little while to filter through, the regular episodes are written and filmed months ahead, but expect to see more of this style as we go, and let me know what you think. After all, if the universe can start fresh every now and then, maybe a show can too. Let me know what you think of the new format, today's theories, and what other cosmology topics you'd like us to look at. As always, until next time, thanks for watching, and have a great week.